right, welcome. Uh, so the first uh, order of business is to review and approve the agenda. So um, there are a few changes to the agenda. One is um, from the um, consent agenda, we removed um, item uh, B. Uh, C and D. Oh, C and D, yep. It goes, it goes A, B, E, F, G, right, okay. Um, so those have already been removed uh, from the online version of the uh, agenda. And then we will not be um, taking up item six, which is the fiscal year energy use report. Um, that was, they needed a little more time for that, so that will be on an upcoming agenda. Um, and I think that is it for changes to the agenda. Any other thoughts, comments on the agenda? Okay, so without objection, we'll consider the agenda uh, approved. Uh, so the next thing is general business and appearances. So this is a time for any member of the public to come address the council on any issue um, otherwise not on the agenda. Um, and if you would keep your minutes to, or keep your comments to two minutes or less and say your name and where you're from. for not getting to print something that I needed to refer to earlier. So I got to I will I guess the fact that the emergency management plan is on the consent agenda uh, means it's fruitless to provide detailed comments on its strengths or weaknesses. But that's an issue that I pay some attention to. Um, I want to note that first I want to refer to a piece that uh, Bernie Lambeck, and I'm happy to send it electronically, posted on Front Porch Forum. And it relates to something I said at the, your last meeting. Um, pardon my. And I'll just quote, it's a couple of paragraphs, but I'm going to just quote the last of it. My view, this is Bernie Lambeck, the damage inflicted on this community arising from the polarized personal attacks against fellow members of this community is far greater than the damage that will be caused either by building the garage or by not building the garage. We are neighbors. I think there's some words, there's some wisdom in that, and there's some caution. I cautioned at the last meeting that we need to have a plan B. The division is between merchants who won't talk to people on the sidewalk that they rely on for their business is, uh, is recurring damage. The press related to, the recent press related to the ongoing litigation and the stalled garage extensively quotes city officials that allude to violations of a confidentiality agreement, which I won't pretend to know anything about. I'm not party to those conversations or that litigation. But when I know that I articulated a number of the same concerns that the garage opponents have related to inadequacy of a traffic study, these construction impacts and mismanagement that I've brought to your attention are perfect examples of that. And for city officials to tell the press, we don't know what they want, they're all just wasting our time, is, is, is disingenuous. It's flat out disingenuous. We need to handle this delicate and damaging division in our community carefully, and it's not being done that way. I'll also cite an article on the construction impacts where our assistant city manager is quoted as saying, my concerns had been addressed. Bill knows and took his own photos. The, the gravel in the, in the area where the road base without a silt, silt fence was allowed to drape down into the river has not been addressed. It's all still there, still falling into the river, covering a, a river bank that should have been cleaned. So it, my concerns were not addressed. I asked the city council to file, ask a &R to issue a fine. You know, do some enforcement action. That's the only way to manage these multi-million dollar contractors. They only respond to their pocketbook. 
So it was not addressed. It was false to tell the press that it was addressed. Um, that's about all I can do in the two minutes. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. And I just want to also affirm that, uh, you know, no, uh, or that uh, personal attacks are um, not necessary and I'm really grateful to uh, people to have civil conversation. Um, all right. And that people can, you know, disagree about things and that's okay. Other comments? Yes. Hello. Uh, so my name is Laura Gebhardt. I'm the executive director of the Montpelier Development Corporation. Um, I'm in my final days as the director, so I just wanted to come and give you an update. Mm -hmm. And I have Sarah Jarvis with me as well, who's the vice chair of the MDC Board of Directors. Um, so I'll allow her to speak on behalf of the board. Um, but I just wanted to thank you all. Um, I for the time that I've been here and getting to work with all of you and learn from you. It's been incredibly meaningful and valuable, so thank you. Um, I am leaving for personal reasons and I get to pursue something that I'm deeply passionate about, so I'm excited about that, uh, but also saddened to be leaving this community. Um, economic development is a multifaceted, collaborative endeavor, and so I'm hopeful that even when I'm gone, <laughs> that will continue. And, uh, this position gets to continue to work with the council and with the city staff. Um, so I'm incredibly appreciative to all of you um, and for us to be able to have civil dialogue around a lot of different issues. Um, so that's been really wonderful. Um, and I'll let Sarah speak on behalf of the board. Thanks, Sarah Jarvis. As Laura said, I'm the vice chair of the board. I'm a former city council member for those of you who weren't still weren't there and actually took my seat when I yeah, stepped off yeah. the council. So. Um, but I just wanted to um, also reiterate the thanks for your support for the organization. We are quite sad to, to have Laura um, move on from our organization and be able to follow her passion, her dream, taking a coaching position. But um, just wanted to you know, be clear that the organization is much more than one staff person. Uh, we're a very committed board of uh, community members, professionals in the community um, who care very much about this community, people like myself who want to make sure the community is affordable for our children and, and that our children will want to be in this community, that it's vibrant, there's a lot going on. Um, we have actively started recruiting for Laura's replacement. We already have 20-something applications that we've received, so there's a lot wow. of interest um, in the organization. There's a lot of interest in Montpelier, too. It's really interesting to get some out-of-state applications, people saying they've heard about Montpelier, they've heard that we're, you know, we have an appetite for um, sustainability and growth and change, and, um, and also that they see, they see some of the motives of, of board members like myself, which are that we want to make, make sure that the community can afford to carry out the kinds of um, goals that we, that we have as a group. I think you know, that we share them with you as a council in terms of making sure we can um, carry out some of our um, really public-minded um, goals of lifting up the whole community and figuring out how to do that in a way that's sustainable and affordable. So again, thank you for your support and we will keep you posted um, as we move forward. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion regarding the consent agenda? Uh, didn't you want to pull item G? Oh, yes, thank you, I'm sorry. Um, my hope is that we could pull um, item G off of the consent agenda, because I think we probably want to discuss that. Is there a, um, a motion to, with that perhaps included, or not, either way? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Further um, comments? So yes? Mm -hmm. There are two marked here expected to be done. We've already. Thank you. There are two here that say they're expected to be removed. Does the motion include them being removed? We already took those off when you approved the agenda. I, I got but the alphabet confused. Sorry. Good clarification, though. Okay. So, just to clarify, it does not include items C or D, right? Right? Yes. Okay, and Connor, that's okay. Great. Okay. So C and D and <clears throat> D. Yes. Uh, Jack. I don't think this merits a lot of discussion, but I noticed one phone number that wasn't right in the emergency plan. Should I just give that to the chief? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, motion on the table. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, I think we should uh, do 
Just go right to um, item G, the reaffirmation of the Sanctuary City Declaration Resolution. Um, so I wanted to pull that off of the consent agenda just because I thought we ought to talk about it. Um, but this had also come from um, Councillor Hill. Do you want to speak to this at all? Um, so I, a few people had reached out to me um, after the sort of uh, nightmare going on on the federal level. Um, and uh, I thought it made sense. I know that there have been some changes to uh, state law regarding um, fair and impartial policing and any sort of cooperation um, with uh, immigration and customs enforcement and um, customs and border patrol. So uh, it seems like uh, it would be a, a ripe time to <coughs> reaffirm our commitment to being a city where everyone belongs and everyone is welcome to be. Um, and also to um, to just clean up some of the language to reflect uh, changes to state law. Great. Any comments from the? Um, um, well, I'll, I'll take uh, first uh, council uh, council comments. Any any council comments on this? Uh, Jack. I had more of a question than a comment, and that was uh, whether someone could explain what the import of the change from the old version to the new version is? Chief is. So the change uh, really has to do with that. You know, if we were to ask, it, it narrows the scope, and we had to change it to criminal investigations only. We have no jurisdiction or authority to participate in or be part of a civil enforcement action regarding immigration. In 2017, Act 79 was passed with bipartisan support and signed, it, and signed by Governor uh, Scott. I was there for the signing, and what that made clear was that Vermont law would comport with the two, in particular, two necessary federal statutes. So we, um, to alleviate, um, in Vermont's view, um, that we would still be eligible to, for federal funding and, and so forth. And they also say that um, some of the Justice Department, that was n still not far enough. Um, but anyway, but that is really the key change. And our model policy that Montpelier PD has adopted is a statewide policy that includes updated language. And, it, and, and what also, we had additional language before in our policy uh, that we had to remove that. So it did comport with the necessary state law now. Great, thanks. Further questions or comments from the council, just initially? Okay, uh, comments from the public, if anyone wants to comment on this. Welcome. Good evening, Pam Walker from Loomis Street and I, <clears throat> plus two others of us back here, <clears throat> excuse me, represent uh, Central Vermont Refugee Action Committee, Refugee Action Network, I should say. And we're just so thrilled with this resolution. We think it's very, very important. And um, our mission is to support and advocate for immigrants, migrants, refugees. And we have a lot of different projects and programs that we are involved in to make all that happen. So thank you for this. And we hope that it, it passes. And um, we really trust that the city police will be respectful of immigrants and migrants as they're in the city and not cooperate with ICE. Um, we know that FIPP is working hard on making, ensuring that that happens. So thank you for bringing this up and I hope that it will be signed finally today. Thanks everyone. Thank you for your organization's great work. Further comments? Uh, Lauren. Um, I would just say I was not here for the last round, so I'm excited to be able to vote on this and appreciate the work that went into crafting this last round and then the, the updates this time. So, thank you. Cool. Is there a motion? I move that we uh, adopt the resolution uh, to designate Montpelier as a sanctuary city. I'll second it. As amended. As well. I, uh, the proposed, with the, the proposed amendments? With the proposed, proposed amendments. amendments. Yes. And that's okay, Donna? Yes. Okay. Further discussion? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries, thank you all. Okay, okay. Um, great, thank you. <laughs> so many papers. Uh, all right, so moving on. Um, 
We are up to an appointment for the uh, Complete Streets group. And uh, for this uh, appointment, we had three vacant seats and one um, applicant. Um, is Phoenix Mitchell here? Seeing as uh, this person is not here, um, uh, we sh should probably still go into executive session, probably. Um, so is there a motion uh, to go into executive session? I move that we go into executive session pursuant to 1 BSA section 317... 313A. 313A blank. Uh, <laughs> three. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we will be right back. Okay, do and I believe I'm just checking the. Uh, <coughs> I'm just quickly looking at the charter to see if that might even be specifically listed as one of the council's duties. Um, um, well, while you're looking for that, perhaps we could add a sentence that would be to the effect of, um, you know, you can find the purchasing policy in the city council handbook or in in some other document. Does that well, so it's maybe not a part of our ordinances, but if someone were to look it up here, they would know where to go to find it. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable. Even you could even go a step further and say the city council shall adopt a purchasing <laughs> policy, so well, that yes. there, is, there that is one in place. Yeah. And does change and then it can change from time to time mm -hmm. without having to go through the whole ordinance amendment process. Um, Ashley, I wonder if just um, instead of um, saying the council shall, I mean, we can insert that as well because I think that is an obligation of the council, but um, all purchases uh, of goods shall be performed in accordance with a purchasing policy Pol as, as adopted by the city council. So you don't yes. need a separate section, it's just and it lets you know where to go right away. Yeah, that's that's a, that sounds good. Other, is that satisfactory to, to you, Lauren? Okay. Yes, thanks. Other comments on that? Okay. All right, any comments from the public on chapter two? Okay, I don't wanna cut off any other comments on chapter two from the council. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna close the public hearing and I think we probably need to vote on um, setting a date for the second reading, which will be May, uh, May 22nd, Correct. our next meeting. Is there a motion regarding uh, the next hearing? So moved. Second. second. Okay, uh, further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, oh, sorry, this is just Food for Thought, Examination of Records Fee, Section 2405. Okay. Um, such fees shall only be payable in cash or check prior to leaving the office of the city clerk. We don't take cards. Well, we were just, we at, just, we're just that. That, that, did that. We brought that up. Yeah. I just said that. Sorry. So that's, Sorry. A, that's a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It was on my list of. It's okay. We, we got nice you. Like. We got you. Don't, don't take office. cards. Not in the office. But we might. But you could. Point. Right, you could. We do want to rule it out. Hey, I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keep it up with the times. Say, I think we should just say in payment for as determined payment. by the clerk or treasurer or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, but rather than list what they are, because, right. you know, we could take Apple Pay or whatever <clears throat> sometime. You know, I mean, who knows, right? Who knows? So. Okay. Um, all right, so next up is uh, reviewing our strategic plan um, that uh, we did we vote? Did we vote, did we we vote on the motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm time. one step behind. <laughs> Good point. We had a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. Thank you. Keeping me straight here. Um, okay, so uh, moving on to adopting the strategic plan. So uh, this uh, uh, document basically that we came up with through uh, retreat time and uh, there was one thing that I wanted to change but I'm going to find it here quickly any other uh, comments on the strategic plan I just add that what the, what you have before you is the report from Julia and the overall summary that was discussed 
What isn't here that you'll have at the next meeting is, um, you may recall, one of the things we talked about was everything that was undone from this present year would carry forward. So we'll have a more full list of all the items as well as some of the backup department work. So you just get a bigger picture of the work plan and what and the projected schedule for the year when they would be coming to the council. So we're working on that now, hopefully for the next meeting. And um, and that so, but we wanted to make sure you got, this was the first chance to see the report since we got it, since you've met, since we received it. So any comments or concerns or questions? All right, other comments? Um, I just want to observe that uh, on energy disclosure, um, energy efficiency and disclosure um, uh, issues, there's that comes up twice. Um, and in one place it says pursue an energy efficiency and disclosure policy, and the other place it just says um, pursue an energy efficiency disclosure policy. So it's just missing an and, and that's on page seven. So it's pretty straightforward. Other comments? Donna, go ahead. I had one tiny little question, and it has to do with the planning framework, page 15, <coughs> to develop strategies to eliminate roof dam connections. Page 15. It should be drain, right? Where, it's where under initiatives. You? Yeah, which, uh, which one? Environmental stewardship. And then you go to initiatives, and then you go like three yep. sentences down. R oh yeah, roof. Drain. It roof should drain. be drain. Yeah. Okay. Drain. Wow, yes. good catch. <laughs> Further comments? Okay. Uh, is there a uh, motion regarding um, adopting our strategic? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Yes, the public. Yes, please. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Hi. Uh, Peter Kalman. Is this working? I think so. Uh, Peter Kalman. Uh, I'm representing the uh, advisory committee, uh, the Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee. Um, and uh, we will be uh, we, we will be, uh, members of our committee will be attending city council meetings on a regular basis. Um, uh, in keeping with our uh, part of our charge, which is to collaborate with city councilors and relevant other city com committee members to support them in centering the experiences of oppressed groups and individuals as they consider policy decisions regarding city operations. Um, so first, I, I just wanted to commend the uh, city council and the people who participated in this um, process the part, and, I, and I, I'm glad that Bill pointed out that this is not the entire result. This is like a sum, summary of the, maybe exactly even a summary summer. of the summary. Um, uh, what is terrific in this report are the aspirational parts of it. If you go through the uh, strategic uh, outcomes, um, all of those introductory paragraphs, which I think are, were actually came from last year as well, um, are fantastic. Um, and we can hardly wait to see the meat. The, you know, um, and when you get to the meat, uh, I hope you will not only be considering populations that are not currently served as well as they might be, but also when there might be unintended negative impacts on those populations. It's not always obvious. You can be very much for something without realizing, oh, what's that going to mean for poor people? Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further comments? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to adopt uh, our strategic plan? So moved. Second. Further discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the motion carries. Um, yes, I Ashley. A, um, I think that this has been, uh, this process the last two years compared to the year before that, this has been amazing. And I really, um, I know that Julia Books 
well in advance, and I know that we're sort of binding a future council to something, but I feel very strongly that, that she is she has the approach that we need as a city to do this work. And so I would like to see if we could all agree to having Bill reach out and get, get her availability so that we can make sure we can, can do this again to, to build off where we've been the last two years. Jack? I think that might require a little more discussion. Not that I'm saying she's terrible or anything like that. But it wasn't the same as, as last year, and I think that there's some value to uh, having a consultant with a different uh, perspective. And so I'm just saying it, I think it might be more of a discussion than that. Should we revisit that? Uh, uh, Ashley, thoughts? Yeah. Well, so I guess... Um, I guess it's the kind of thing that I would really like to do sooner rather than later. Sure. Um, so I know, I know our next agenda is kind of busy, no, but it fine. just, I, I think it's a really important piece of the work that the council is going to be doing. So um, if. Yeah. Just looking at the uh, agenda uh, over there, there are the upcoming agendas. Um, what would you think about talking about it in June? Like June 12th? Is that enough? time to okay plenty okay she books in a vs but not that far okay, <laughs> okay. I, well i've had some consultants yeah. where it's like a year yeah, out right so no fair enough so uh we'll look at i think that's a great conversation to have and let's let's do it um let's aim for june 12th and um go from there does that sound okay to others okay great um we are gonna set a new record here in terms of being done with this meeting team I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Um, summer meeting schedule. Speaking of summer agendas, um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna. So I mean, we just threw this. this out, but obviously, uh, you know, we've talked in the past about, or in most recent years, we've dropped at least one summer meeting, and so we suggested the the schedule that worked best for staff <laughs> but recognizing that that may or may not work best for the council members uh, but figured you had to start discussion somewhere so uh donna well i must say i like it because <laughs> july is one of those five week months yeah, so, so it gives us a nice span of time um i would uh, yeah actually just want to let everybody know um the July meeting, I will actually be um, at the same program that the mayor attended last oh, yeah. year. Um, so I won't be here in person. Um, and depending on what things look like, I may be able to call in. But you, Yeah, you should not plan to call in. Just be there. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, so you don't even miss one in July? Only miss way? one. Okay. Well, yeah, there's the only one theoretically scheduled for, for July. Know, if right. we, yeah. yeah but yeah, the, the program the starts yeah, that one. week and yeah. then goes till the end of the month. Okay, um, so does canceling the Ju July 24th meeting work for folks? Yeah, okay. Well, wow, there's no, uh, yes, Jack. I'll, if it's fine with everybody else, I'll be happy with it, but uh, the 21st is, of August is not the best night for me to have a meeting. Uh, yeah. Donna. Yes, that made it the, was that intentional, Bill, that changed it to the third Wednesday instead of the fourth? Uh, no. That may have just been. Oh, that's just a type. It should have been the 28th, right? Yeah. 28th should have been, okay. Good. Yes. Good catch. Um, the 21st is my anniversary, so. Oh, well. Congratulations. Well, doesn't she want to um, come and sit with us? <laughs> she watches I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Glenn. Um, since that came up that the 21st uh, is n was not the intended date, uh, it looks like we also have a one-week gap between the two June meetings as proposed, the 12th and the 19th. Yeah, that should also not be. It should be the 26th. 26th, yeah. Okay, so I, mean, I think it still works for me, but. I didn't, I, I didn't want to have a meeting on Juneteenth either. <laughs> I was looking forward to calling that out. But it's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, do you th- do we need to vote on? You should probably. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll add one thing, which is just my annual caveat that even though we're canceling the regular meeting, that we reserve the right to call special if we need contracts approved or those guys obviously probably warned but could be call in meetings occasionally we've had five minute meetings to do certain business so um, doesn't mean you won't be called into duty but we won't have a regular full council night agenda okay um, is there a motion to amend the summer schedule as discussed I so I would move that we amend the uh, city council summer meeting schedule to reflect meetings um, on June 12th, June 26th, July 10th, August 14th, and then we decided August 28th. Yeah, those are regular. And um, I assume those meetings would start at 6:30. Mm-hmm. Okay. Second. Further discussion. I just I have a question of posting our regular meeting dates. The only date we're changing the is the July. So we will so just note that that's been canceled. That okay. I, I guess I just feel more comfortable making the motion to change that one meeting unless people will think these are not our regular dates. These are our uh-huh. regular no, dates. These are our regular dates. I think she was just responding okay. to I was just what was in yeah, this like, I was just I understand Clarifying that. all the dates. I just felt just asking if we just wanted to change the one date, not meet on July. I think that's well, I think that's sort 24. of the same. Okay. The same thing. So, uh, did you have a question, comment? No. Okay. Uh, you're okay with that? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, further discussion. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to go to council reports. Um, would anybody in particular like to start? Go ahead, Donna. Sure. Uh, the Montpelier Infrastructure uh, Commi- Transportation Infrastructure Committee met just last evening, and one of the things that they had a, a discussion about were proposals who are s- soliciting money from the group to sponsor unusual projects. And one was coffee pooling. So instead of car pooling, they're using the word coffee. And it's a gentleman from Worcester who he just appointed to the MTIX committee. And his idea is to have the cafe in Worcester and the cafe on Elm Street, uh, Birch Garden, Birch Grove, 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 Grove yep. uh, both be a place where people can pick up tokens. You pay a dollar for the token, and then you have this ride. And you turn the token into the driver. The driver then has a dollar off at that cafe. And the idea of this is trying to reduce the amount of cars going up and down Route 12 towards Worcester and Montpelier. And he's a bike rider, but not he, some weather he doesn't ride. And so he got hitchhiking. He thought, why not make it a little more formal, but yet still loose, and wants to try this. So his uh, application hasn't been approved, but I thought it was a really neat idea, cafe to cafe. And it's a way to help people just spontaneously be innovative to help everyone get around. So love it. we'll keep you posted if it goes through. <coughs> oh, and the other thing, just language-wise, um, in staff as well as city council members, we need to remind ourselves that it's not a bike path anymore. And every document I see on that, I mark it up, but I always, don't always remember to tell staff or other people. It's a shared use path. It does take in pedestrians, major, major issue. Thank, Thank you. you. Good call. Connor. All right. I was invited to attend the social and economic justice uh, meeting last night. Um, we're, we're very well represented by three people in the room. Uh, Peter, Jamie t- is awesome. And uh, Lauren, of course, I think has added a lot to that committee. But uh, I just wanted to say it was like, I think it was valuable. I was invited in to talk about the responsible contracting ordinance. And uh, you know, I, I had said to them, I heard this committee was a bit chaotic. but. Like, I can see through the chaos, like, um, a real, you know, a real light at the end of the tunnel here. Uh, they sort of put you through the gauntlet and ask you, especially Peter, he was like, uh, Jack Russell Terrier on your leg, but uh, they'll put you through the gauntlet, you know. And I, I think it's, it's good for the process because you can hammer out a lot of these things before you bring it to this stage here. And I, I think it might just be something to keep in the forefront of our minds to, if you have something that's yeah, transportation related, you know, bring it in front of the committee. And it'd probably save time at our own council meetings. But 
I thought the uh, racial uh, equity toolkit, which they're converting into the sort of equity toolkit uh, to broaden it on a bunch of issues, uh, can be really valuable just as sort of, uh, you know, six steps that you put it through and uh, any, any proposal and, and just make sure that it, uh, it benefits everybody in the community. So I, I was really impressed. Uh, other thing to note, I attended the VCFA reception with the board the other night there. Uh, had a great chat with some of the, the, the board members. And uh, I, I, I sat next to Margaret uh, Patterson, who's the author of Bridge to Terabithia and a number of other uh, young Kath adult you mean novels. Catherine? Catherine. 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 Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. Uh, next to me too long. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't realized that Catherine recently moved to our community, so uh, wow. that, what a great treasure we have. Just welcoming Margaret here. Not just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Catherine here, so it's great to have her there. And uh, we should talk about the micro transit committee that we sat in at mm -hmm. some point because we actually got to see the technology work, the last one Donna and I were. And it actually made it quite real, I thought, for the first time. There was this concept in my mind, but having them walk through it, you know, uh, made me think it was something that was actually, like, quite viable. So I was impressed. It's they showed the software from the dispatcher's point of view, from the rider's point of view, and the driver's point of view. It was very interesting, the software, what you saw on your phone or your iPad. It was very good. Cool. And I'm good. 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 Uh, so first I have to uh, uh, let the council know that I uh, am stepping off of the Montpelier Transportation Infrastructure Committee because I realized that uh, it meets it on the same exact schedule as the T.W. Wood Board, which I should have realized when I first got onto it, but I didn't. Um, so I think with uh, both Donna and Jack on that committee, we probably have adequate representation. Um, uh, but I apologize for my screw up. Uh, for the wood gallery, I was just at the board meeting um, on Monday. Um, no, I suppose it was yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, and I have good news from the wood gallery. Uh, there is a new executive director, just, just hired Margaret Coleman from Burlington. She seems great and I'm looking forward to working with her. Um, we are uh, bidding a fond farewell to Ginny Callen, who's run it for the last couple of years. She will, of course, stick around, and she's overlapping with Margaret for a little while. Um, but that is the news there. Um, uh, I visited Another Way last Monday for their weekly um, community meeting, and that continues to be a really valuable thing for me to talk to those folks. Uh, and I'm hopeful that it will, at some point, be useful to them, too. Um, I know <coughs> right now, uh, and over the last couple of weeks since the shelters uh, shut down for the season, um, lots of people uh, uh, who come through another way uh, are in need of camping gear, among other things. So if anyone has... Uh, good, uh, usable quality, uh, tarps, ponchos, tents, sunscreen, tick spray, uh, sleeping bags and pads, uh, little first aid kits, um, just about anything along those lines. There's a long list, but uh, if, if you have those things, take them over to another way. Um, people can really use them. Um, I like the, the uh, reminder that we should be calling the bike path the shared use path. Uh, and uh, in m my parlance, I'm going to start calling it the SUP, I think, uh, <laughs> for the SUP, uh, in a similar way that I call the, the water resource recovery facility the WRF. Um, so I think, I think we could get, get quicker on those things. The SUP. Uh, the the Sibawin Sibawinabee sup yeah, is that there right? Is. <laughs> Part of it anyway. Yeah. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, uh, we got to watch the 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 uh, the sup bridge get uh, installed uh, <coughs> out our back door from the drawing board last week, and that was fantastic and really thrilling. And I can't wait for it to be open. I am going to run across twice. Um, <laughs> 
and uh, over and back, over and back at least. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and then tomorrow morning I'll be at Baguitos from 8.30 to 9.30 as usual. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Uh, Ashley. Um, so, a couple of things. Um, uh, so this coming Friday in Barry City, the Washington County State Attorney's Office along with uh, Vermont Legal Aid uh, and a number of volunteer lawyers is hosting an uh, expungement clinic. Uh, so for uh, folks with certain kinds of convictions, they can come in, uh, speak with an attorney uh, who can advise them. My office will be there um, to uh, review requests and answer questions for uh, defense attorneys. Um, and uh, that'll be from 3 to 7 p.m. Uh, in Barry City at the Memorial Auditorium. Um, there is an event on Facebook as well. I shared that, but I figured I'd put it out here um, as well. Uh, I also wanted to highlight, um, I did not call dispatch about this last night, but I, I did notice again today um, an issue uh, at the intersection of Sibley and College. Uh, there's some water uh, coming up. And running so down. we have a we have a malfunction valve. It's not okay. a water lane break, okay. and they're trying to figure out how to fix it. They may end up having to do a major dig and repair, but they're hoping they can okay. because it's 12 feet down. Yeah. I wasn't. I just yep. I, you had so said to call, and yep. it sort of slipped my mind. But um, and uh, the only other thing um, that I would highlight: uh, a good friend of mine uh, died a year ago um, of a uh, fatal heroin overdose here in mm -hmm. Montpelier. Um, and uh, there was a, a relatively significant or some significant drug activity going on uh, up at the Econo Lodge recently. Um, and I just want to reiterate for anyone in our community who is struggling with addiction, um, Montpelier police uh, are able to provide transportation for anyone uh, looking to uh, connect with a treatment provider. Um, you know, there are lots of uh, meeting options. I know we still have a long way to go as a community to really destigmatize addiction, but um, at this point, there's really, uh, there, there are services available and um, there are professionals who are, who are willing to step up and, and step forward. And I hope at some point that, you know, we can, we can make it a year with no drug-related overdose deaths here uh, in town. But um, I just wanted to reiterate that that those services are available um, and that there are lots of people here, even at City Hall, who can, who can direct you to, to people that, that can help you get where you need to go and, and help you get the services that you need. Thank you. Jack. Well, Ashley said, s stole what I was gonna say. Free expungement <laughs> clinic uh, coming up on Friday. <laughs> it's one of those, the rare occasion where you'll get to see prosecutors and defense attorneys working together to uh, achieve a really beneficial social result. So if anyone out there is watching, you can, make an, you can walk in, you can also make an appointment at 424-4701. I've uh, put the flyers around town in various places, including out here in the hallway, it's at food co-op and some other places. Um, and it, I just think it's a great thing. Cool. Lauren. Great. I just wanted to um, thank the many city staff uh, who have been giving me tours of facilities. I went to the WARF um, Water <laughs> <laughs> Resource Recovery Facility, got a good hour, 45 minute or so tour. It's fascinating. Eager to see the new projects going in. Um, the police chief and fire chief <coughs> have both uh, spent um, quality time and just continue to be so impressed with the really kind of caring and thoughtful approach that all the departments I've toured take with, with their important work they do for the city. Um, so just wanted to, to thank all of them for the time and the work that they're doing and look forward to learning a lot more um, of what's happening and how we can all continue to do even better together. Um, Connor mentioned some of the social and economic justice advisory committee work. We did adopt a strategic plan, so when I get that final version, I'll send it around to everyone um, so people can see that, and I'm sure we'll post it. It might already be up. Um, not yet, but coming soon. Um, and as we work on some of the more kind of tangible tools, but I think looking at the um, socially responsible ordinance um, 
concept and other things, it's starting to see how this group can play a, a good role in, in bringing a, an important equity lens to the work we're doing. So eager to do that. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, so I just want to update folks that I uh, testified this morning uh, at uh, the House Government Operations Committee on the um, uh, energy efficiency charter change that passed on town meeting day. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's uh, kind of up in the air at this point, and we will see where it lands. So there we are. What were the prominent questions? Could you share? Yeah, um, so they, uh, as expected, were very, um, you know, concerned about like how um, how we would, um, uh, you know, address uh, folks who couldn't afford to um, do energy efficiency work, and um, you know, I mean that my to my mind, um, that is all part of the the process, you know, between um, finding appropriate exemptions and or matching people with appropriate um, incentives. What um, my hope is that you know we would be able to address those concerns. Um, so. Uh, in a certain sense, uh, well, in a certain sense, either way, um, I think we can start to have some just more public conversation about um, the direction that we go, probably starting sometime in June. Um, so starting to get some specific ideas out there, start vetting them with the public, see how we can um, match, uh, you know, regulation with incentives and um, how we um, can come up with some logistics um, for how this would be implemented. Either, either way, um, I think it should be fine. Um, and then um, one of the other, uh, well, so with the, the new versus existing buildings, um, there was one fellow who asked um, if it was necessary to regulate existing buildings because um, just like uh, in, uh, with cars, the energy efficiency regulation for cars is only on new cars, but I pointed out that cars have a lifespan of about 10 years, and so there's, you know that in 10 years there's going to be turnover, uh, and that is just not the case with buildings. Um, so there we are. Yep, so we'll see. Uh, all right. Um, uh, John? Okay. Okay. Do we have any? All right, so uh, we do have an, an executive session uh, uh, at this point, I think. Yes. Um, if uh, well, if, if, pe if people have anticipated executive session, if people want to do that. Um, is there a motion to go into executive session? I move the, the council find the premature general public knowledge of, the, uh, of our positions in the uh, ongoing litigation regarding the parking garage. We'll place the, clearly place this city at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing our ultimate uh, positions. I'll second. Further discussion? All right. Uh, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so the motion passes and we will... Oh, no, you need a second motion. Second. And I oh, move that thank we enter you. Good call. executive session to discuss the parking garage litigation pursuant to Title One, Section Three Thirteen A One. Second. E. I think he has another letter there. Yeah. He's, he's Thank you, Jack. There should be. Yeah. E. Okay. Yep. yep. He seconded. And Glenn is seconded. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, all those. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, and so we uh, will not be returning to take any um, action. So, um, yeah, that's, that's otherwise it for the public session. Thank you.